Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Charlie, and today I'm going to be answering your questions, my subscribers. Yes, I'm going to be answering your questions, see? And uh, this is my second Q&A video. I did my first Q&A video back in 2015. Now, if you want to uh, watch that video, the links will be in the description box. Now, before I get started with this video, uh, I want to let you all know that um, instead of watching the entire video looking for the answer to your question, I have the names and the video marks in the description box. So let's say for instance if uh, Stacy asks me a question and what you'll do is you'll look in the description box, you'll see the name and the video mark. So that way you won't have to watch the entire video just to get an answer to your question. You could just go in the description box, look up the, uh, the video mark, hit the video mark on the video, and there you go. Okay, now, uh, I also wanna let you know that I will be doing a lot of talking, so uh, bear with me, and uh, I hope you all enjoyed the video. All right, here we go. Now, first question comes from Whitney L. Hi Charlie, I've been cooking since I was seven with my mama, but for the life of me, I can't make a steak. It usually comes out tough. Some suggestions will be greatly appreciated. Well, it really depends on the type of steak that you have because they have certain cuts of steak that when you cook them, they come out tough and there's other cuts where you, you uh, cook them, they come out nice, tender, and juicy. From my experiences with cooking steak, I always um, cook my steak on both sides on a medium high temperature for about two minutes and my steak always comes out like a little bit medium rare on the inside but it is nice tender juicy and delicious now just like with any type of beef that you cook um, you want to be careful with the temperature because uh, you can't cook beef too much at a high temperature because you'll dry it out and it'll become tough very quickly so uh, I think that if you cook your steak at a lower temperature, I think that will work. Um, but other than that, that's really all I, I can really say because, uh, you know, from my experiences, like I said, I only cook my steak for about two minutes on each side, medium high heat, and my steak is nice, juicy, and delicious. And you know, steak is also expensive too. You can't, you're not going to really find too, too uh, many uh, steaks at a cheap price, you know. But yeah. But I hope that uh, the information I gave you helps. <laughs> okay, next question uh, comes from Alyssa Fisher. I can't fry chicken to save my life. It always tastes bland no matter what kind of seasoning I use. Are there any techniques that I can use to make some tasty chicken? Well, one of the key things to making some good tasty fried chicken, baby, you have to season it. It's imperative that you season your chicken, okay? You want to season the chicken and you want to season the batter for the chicken too, okay? Um, this is some good seasoning right here. It's called Tony Sachery's Creole Seasoning and this is a uh, you add this into some um, batter for your chicken and you got you some fried chicken, baby. That's right. Now, <clears throat> let me stop joking. Uh, but on a serious note, yes, it is very important that you season, um, especially when it comes to frying, it is very important. Um, one of the reasons why your chicken is tasting bland is because you're not adding enough seasoning in there. If you want to, just dump the whole... I'm, I'm joking, I'm joking. But you gotta make sure that you add enough seasoning into it. Especially where I'm from in New Orleans, we don't, we don't play with our seasonings. This is seasoning capital right here. We love adding seasonings into our food. I don't know about elsewhere. You know the people up north, they only add salt and pepper in their foods. But where I'm from, baby, we love us some seasonings, okay? All right, now, um, one of the things you want to do is you take your chicken, once you clean it and everything, you add some, you sprinkle a little seasoning on there. Um, if, 
like I said Creole seasoning works best then you take the chicken and you add it into your favorite batter whatever type of batter you have but um, I know one of the key things is the flour of course you must add seasoning to the flour depending on the amount of flour that you add because everybody has different batches of uh, chicken that they have to cook and you have to add a certain amount of flour to be able to not only coat the chicken but to be able to coat all the rest of the chicken so the more flour you add the more seasoning you have to add so if I have about a cup of flour you might need to add about two one to two tablespoons of seasoning to it but if I got something like 10 cups of flour then you need to add a whole a ton of seasoning to it okay so it is very important that you add enough seasoning um, like I said Creole seasoning works best uh, Tony Sacheries works really good with that um, other Creole seasons like Zatarain's and Slap Your Mama would work and um, that's it okay next question comes from Tiara Dani I'm not certain if I pr pronounced the last name right it's D-A-N-A-E I hope I'm right not I'm sorry <laughs> Hi Charlie, um, I have been cooking since I was 12. I fell in love with baking about three years ago. Are there any tips or advice that you'd be willing to give newbies like me? And also, are there any specific baking tools, brands included, that you recommend we buy? Well, <clears throat> here's some advice. Um, you want to make sure you understand what you're doing and uh, pay attention at all times make sure that you are concentrating on what you're doing as well um, as far as measurements and ingredient amounts everything you want to pay attention to that um, also if you fail at a recipe or if you fail at something um, don't give up so easily start over and uh, also if people criticize you in any way uh, Take that criticism, instead of turning it into something negative, turn it into something positive. Let's say, for instance, if you're making a pound cake recipe and, you know, somebody, a few people have told you, oh, this pound cake's dry, you know, um, instead of being offended about it, use that criticism to make the recipe better. You um, do different things, experiment with different things to make the pound cake recipe better. And that way when, uh, and this is another thing, you could make a little pound cake and pass it out to those same people by, like, hey, I, I've improved with my pound cake, you know, here's a piece here and they taste like, ooh, that was a good pound cake, delicious. But, you know, you get what I'm saying, right? You know, just, you know, take the criticism and make yourself better. And uh, from my own personal experiences, that's what I've learned. Okay, um, you know, I've, there are many times where I failed on stuff. People told me this and that, but uh, I've used that and I've made myself better as, as a result. All right, now as far as tools go, um, as far as mixing, um, a hand mixer um, would do. Um, or you can get a little cheap and expensive stand mixer. Or you wanna make sure you get the one with the little planetary mixing action. That, that definitely works. Um, sturdy spoon spatula whisk as far as cake pans the eight or nine inch round cake pans would do muffin pan butt pan of course for your pound cakes and as far as the brand goes um in my opinion it's not always about the brand okay because there are some inexpensive brands that could perform close or even better than the name brand stuff okay really about the quality and the durability of that particular product that that brand is offering okay I'm gonna give you a prime example KitchenAid is one of the best stand mixers on the market today everybody loves KitchenAid right but as for me I'm using a, a inexpensive stand mixer by Hamilton Beach and it does all the work for me to be honest with you you know and I had it for about three to four years now and uh, it does everything for me <laughs> basically and um, that's really it now when it does come to the name brand stuff there are some things that um, that name brand can do 
that the things that aren't really so popular that have a name brand can't do. So, you know, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's really, again, like I said, it's all about the quality and what the product can do and, and the durability as well. Okay, next question comes from Charlie Pinkham. Charlie, that's a good name right there. <laughs> okay, will you attempt any cooking game shows or cooking show challenges? Um, example, Food Network in 2017. Um, I've never really done a cooking show game challenge or cooking show challenges before. Um, I know a lot of people have been bringing up this thing about me being on the Food Network. Um, to be honest, I appreciate everybody's compliment that I should be on the Food Network and that I should be on my own t should have my own TV show. But um, for now, I'm I'm very very grateful for what I have now under my belt. You know, I've come a long way. You know, and uh, I really appreciate you all's comments on that. Compliments on that. Yeah. But uh, there is a difference between being on the Food Network. And being on YouTube YouTube you know I can create my videos whenever I want to do basically whatever I want but when you're on a food network you're on the contract when they say Charlie we need you to do a recipe by Wednesday so it could be on 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 the TV show you have to have it right then and there you are the contract with these people so it's it's a much different ball game versus what I'm doing now I mean it would be great but you know I, right now I prefer to be I'm right here on YouTube, you know, but if it does happen, you know That'll be a good thing, you know, and I can probably you know come up with some things and represent my city of New Orleans Of course. Yeah but uh, for now I'm on YouTube and uh, I'm just grateful man. I'm, I'm just grateful for what I have and that's that's really it Okay, next question comes from Persia Seventh Car. Crawfish season is here. Will you give any tutorials on making boiled crawfish or shrimp? Well, I actually do have some crawfish um, recipes in mind that I'm going to be doing for this year. Yeah, sneak peek. <laughs> but um, as far as doing a, a boiled crawfish and shrimp video, um, for me, it would be uh, pretty difficult for me to do a video and not only that I've never really bought crawfish and show I never actually had a crawfish ball but I do um, know some things on what to do because I've watched many many of people make ball crawfish I'm quite sure it's very very simple and then I don't even have the tools to even make it so you know it's it's uh, it's gonna be pretty expensive to make and then at the same time if I bought a crawfish, I gotta invite people over and all this stuff, you know. So uh, for me, it would be difficult um, to do a video on bald crawfish and shrimp. I would love to do it, but um, right now it's not gonna be easy for me to do. Um, yeah. But as far as uh, other recipes go, maybe so. But then again, you know what? I'm. You know what? Um. It's a possible thing with the shrimp, but the crawfish is. You know, it's, it's a little different. It is a possibility though, but then again, it's, it's gonna be very difficult. It's gonna be too difficult for me to do, yeah. But other than that, as far as the crawfish recipes, other crawfish recipes, um, definitely uh, be coming up with some stuff on that, yeah. Okay, next question comes from Jean Page. What dish have you mastered that once was a challenge for you to prepare? That's uh, actually a very good question, Gene. Um, as far as cooking goes, um, I've never really had too much of uh, many challenges um, as far as cooking food goes. Um, it's more like with the baking that is more of a challenge um, as far as cooking goes because baking is more of a science and you have to add certain amounts of ingredients you know to make the cakes rise and if you don't do this and if you don't do that the cake will fail and you know I mean it's it's a little bit more difficult to bake than it is to cook 
So for me, I would have to say uh, making the cakes from scratch <clears throat> was a little bit more of a challenge for me versus uh, with the cooking goals. You know, with the cooking, you know, yeah, I've made some mistakes with cooking, but you know, it didn't really take me long at all for me to be like, okay, I can do this and do that and get it right, you know. But uh, yeah, more like for the baking part for me, it's more of the challenge and uh, yeah. Now, as far as food, um, I cannot even think of anything. I, I really can't. I really cannot. Because even if I did mess up on something, I could always, once I make it the second time, I'm, it's good to go. Yeah, and that's it. Okay, next question comes from Will It Read. Charlie, what is your all-time favorite dish and dessert? Hmm. I mean, I cook so much stuff that I don't necessarily have an all-time favorite dish. Um, I do like holiday food. And as a child, I remember I used to always say that roast was my favorite part of my holiday meal. And I still love roast today. So I'm going to say roast is uh, one of my favorite foods to, to eat. Um, also, I also like macaroni and cheese. Uh, every holiday, I'm cooking macaroni and cheese. I, I, I really do. I, I, I would actually consider that to be a favorite because I eat it a lot. Uh, well, I eat it a lot on holidays only. <laughs> okay. Uh, every holiday, I'm cooking it. So, yeah. Now, as far as desserts, um, I do like cake. I do like pies. But I would have to say um, one of my all-time favorites would be ice cream. I do like ice cream. And uh, my favorite ice cream is butter pecan. Uh, yeah, I do love butter pecan ice cream. And I uh, also like uh, vanilla ice cream, but not, not homemade vanilla, but the vanilla bean ice cream. I, I love that one as well. And there's a couple of other favorites that I have. But overall, ice cream is, is one of my favorites. I have so many different things, uh, so many different desserts that I like. Um, it's, it's unbelievable. And the same thing with cooking. I, I, I cook so much stuff that, you know, I don't necessarily have a, a favorite. But uh, I would have to say, um, to this day, I would have to say roast. Roast with the brown gravy and the rice. Wonderful. And, and macaroni and cheese. Love that one too. <laughs> okay, next question comes from YouTube name Roses For Me. Roses, then the number four, then me. Her question is, what is the real recipe for cooking the perfect pot of rice? As silly as it may seem, me and rice don't get along. Well, rice is uh, very simple and easy to do. I learned how to cook rice from uh, watching many of my family members cook it. And everybody seemed to cook rice a little differently. My mom, when she cooked her rice, she added it into a pot with a little water and she just let it cook down. My auntie used a rice cooker to cook her rice. And my grandmother, she cooked her rice. She added it into a pot with uh, lots of water. And she would cook the rice like how you would cook pasta, so to speak. She would cook the rice until it was just about right. Then she would strain it and let it sit. And there you go. You have a nice, perfect pot of rice. Now, as far as me, um, I liked my grandmother's step um, better because when I added the rice into the pot, um, while the water was boiling, all I had to do is wait until the rice get to the right texture that I wanted. You know, do a little taste test every few minutes to see if it's at the perfect texture. Once that's finished, I take my rice, I drain it, let it sit so it can dry out a little bit, and there you go. And it's, it's just that simple to do, you know. But I, I actually like my grandmother's method better. <laughs> and, and to be honest, my auntie's and my mother's methods were, it, it's, it, was, just, it was just about the same. All the results is, is the same to me in my opinion. But um, I have a few people that told me that I cook a nice pot of rice. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, but um, they have a lot of people that cook their rice differently. And, and as for me, I just follow my grandmother's footsteps as far as making uh, rice goes. Okay, next question comes from YouTube name B. 
1H5. That is the YouTube name, B1H5. I'm not certain if that's a 1 or L, but it, it's, it looks like an L to me, so I'm going to say L. Okay, um, the first question is, in a few of your videos, I've heard you say that you always eat the food that you cook all by yourself. Absolutely. I was wondering if you have any family, do you ever invite your parents over for dinner? Okay, um, do I have any family? Yes, I do have family. Do you ever invite your parents over for dinner? Hmm, I wish. Um, the other question is, what do you do for a living? Hmm, let me put it like this. I deal with people. Uh, it's like customer service type of thing. And, uh, that's really it. <clears throat> okay, next question comes from Mylon Aaron. That's M-Y-L-Y-N, last name A-A-R-I-N. That's the YouTube name. Her question is, have you ever made a recipe or recorded a video of a recipe that you thought would turn out good but something bad happened, like the food went bad or fell on the floor or even tasted horrible? I always wonder if things like that happen on the cooking shows I watch. That's a, actually a very, very good question. I absolutely love that. Um, to answer your question, absolutely. It does happen to uh, other cooking shows. I can guarantee you it does. Um, prime example, me of course, okay? Um, I'm gonna give you uh, an example. Um, when I was recording a recipe for a lemon pound cake, um, I actually added too much of an ingredient into the pound cake recipe which caused it to turn out way too bitter. I actually added too much of lemon juice to it. I mean, I had the lemon juice in the bottle and instead of adding the milk, I added the lemon juice. I don't know what I was thinking. Like, you know, but you know, there are times when some of us don't really pay attention all the time. I just wasn't really, you know, focused enough and I just wasn't paying attention. And uh, when I tasted the cake, I'm like, oh my goodness, it tastes so bitter. I like, man, I could have, and then I just realized, oh, I forgot to add the milk. I, 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 I didn't, I added the lemon juice instead of the milk, so I was just literally like gone. I was like, how could I do something like that? But everybody, I'm quite sure, at some point in their lives, made a, mis a, a, a mistake like that one, you know, but in a different way. Yeah, but uh, yes, we all make mistakes. No one is perfect, and I, I can guarantee you, it does happen with other cooking shows. Most definitely. Absolutely. And the question, I absolutely love it. That was lovely. That was lovely. Okay, next question comes from Jose Garber. I would ask about kitchen organization. That is one area that I'm really lacking in. Do you have a pantry? If so, how do you go by organizing it? Well, to answer your question, um, I don't have a pantry. <laughs> I don't. Um, I wish I did. That would be wonderful right about now. But um, I store like stuff like my seasonings and, and spices. I store that in my kitchen cabinets. I use that for my storage area. And uh, I'm going to give you a demonstration um, of that. But before, I mean, let's talk about kitchen organization. Um, it is important that your kitchen is organized because if it's not, you're not gonna really be able to do anything. If you got stuff all over, you're not gonna have you're not gonna have room to cook, you're not gonna be able to prepare things. You just it's it's very important to be organized organized <laughs> organized in your kitchen. It's very important. And uh, I'm I'm just happy to be one of those people that I'm when it comes to my kitchen, I love my kitchen to be organized and clean at all times. Okay. Now, as far as the uh, pantry goes, I can give you some ideas on what to do. Um, let's say, for instance, like if you have, you know, your seasonings, you put all of that in one area, your spices, you have that in one area, and whatever else, if you have anything like salt and pepper, you could just put that in another area. I mean, it's, it's just very, uh, being organized is very simple, very easy to do. Now, sometimes you have to work with the little room you have, just like I do, you know. Uh, 
not everything can be accommodated in my kitchen cabinet so I have to move some things in different places so that way you know I can have room for other stuff to add other stuff but you know I just do the best I can as far as organization goes but as far as a pantry goes um, like I said you just have everything organized in one area that's basically it now also another good idea is to create labels you know I think that'll be another idea you have spices spices one area seasonings another area you know dishes another area you know stuff like that you know if you have a pantry with snacks you know chocolate bars right here chips right here other snacks right here and you put the other snacks in those area you put the ch uh, candy bars in one area chips in one area and it's just simple very simple now if you have too much then you might have to uh, try to work with what you have and and uh, we'll make some room from there but if you have another little small space that you can actually cramp something in you know put it there I mean that's it as long as it's organized and it fits right into that space and it goes with everything else in that particular area then that's fine sure absolutely now on to the demonstration okay here's my cabinet here and this is how the inside looks here um, there's some stuff that's kind of a little bit all over the place a little bit sorry I organized it as, as much as I could because I have so much stuff you know so many things now over here I have all of my um, all of my flavorings and toward the back right here I have all of my food colorings over here I have my seasonings and over here to my far left I have all of my spices now up here I have all of my flavored puddings um, they have some big big items that can't fit on the other shelf so I have to put that on this shelf here and up here of course I have my bacon powder bacon soda and cornstarch and there's actually some things I, I have to get rid of I, I, I try to keep it as organized as possible you know yeah but uh, one time I did try organizing it a little bit and I was like, you know what, I'm going back to this way here. I, I just think that this way works better for me. I tried to organize it, you know, keeping all my food colorings in one area. But they all in one area. It's just that the food colorings are pushed back. The extracts is a little bit, it's all the way on the right, but they have some up front. And, you know, it's, 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 it's pretty decent, <laughs> I think. Yeah. But um, it's more convenient for me, and this is how I do it. Um, everything, the most stuff that I use, the stuff that I use all the time is toward the front. Everything that I don't really use is like toward the back. Not necessarily everything. There are some things that's in the back that I use all the time. I just have to put it all the way to the back. But um, most stuff that I don't use, it is toward the back. Now, up here on the second shelf here, I mostly use all this stuff all the time. So, it doesn't really matter. And of course, on the third shelf up front, I'm always using baking powder, baking soda, and cornstarch. So, yeah. And that's it. <laughs> All right, this next question comes from Julie Wood. I'm not certain if she wants this in the QA video, but I'm going to include it in there anyway. Um, <laughs> what about a butter cake or a butter pound cake recipe? That's actually a very good idea. Basic pound cake recipe, right? Right. But the thing is, is that when I make these cakes, I'm by myself. So, I mean, I got to eat the cake by myself, you know. Nobody share it with. But uh, anyways, um, on a more serious note, um, I have many of pound cakes uh, recipes on YouTube. I have the 7-Up Pound Cake, the Strawberry Pound Cake, the Lemon Pound Cake. Still got a couple of more pound cakes recipes I got to do. I got, got a few, but I'm, I'm not finished yet. But, uh, yeah. Um, I have all of those pound cakes, but a butter pound cake, just a regular pound cake, I think that that would be another great addition uh, to my channel. I think that would that would be great, yeah. But I still have other pound cakes that I have to do as, as well, so, you know. Okay, next question comes from Wendy McKierman. I think it's, uh, M the first name is Wendy, last name is M-C-K-I-R-N-A-N. McKierman. Oh my goodness, that's terrible. I can't pronounce names. <laughs> Anyways, um, on to the question. Um, are you a professional chef slash cook for a living? Where did you learn all of your cooking and baking skills? Um, no, I'm not a professional cook 
or a chef for a living. You know, I've never done a job regarding uh, cooking. But uh, I have worked alongside cooker, cooks and bakers in a kitchen. Absolutely. In, in, a, in a restaurant as well. Okay. Um, as far as me learning all my cooking skills, um, I learned from my grandmother and my aunt and my uncle. Those are three of the best cooks in my family. And uh, I also learned how to cook on my own as well. Um, when I first started out cooking, I always, basically, I always cook for myself. That's what my grandmother always told me. I always wanted to cook for myself. And uh, over time, I just got better. You know, I learned by watching and experimenting with my own little stuff. You know, with the whatever ingredients that I had, I just took that and tried to see what I could work with. And bam, there it is. <laughs> and uh, again, like I said, I just... You know, like my grandmother, I watch my grandmother cook, I watch my aunt cook, my uncle cook, I watch a lot of people cook, you know, and uh, that's how I learned how to cook, you know, just by watching. Um, as far as baking goes, my grandmother is the, is the primary uh, reason for that, because she started me off with the box cakes and stuff. I was making the box cakes, now I wasn't always making cakes from scratch, you know. Um, when I first started, I was making a box cake. And I remember one time as a kid, my mom let me uh, make a cornbread one time. It wasn't from scratch, but it was out the box. And I was, I was pleased with that. And, and this is the thing. I'm going to tell you, I added, um, I added honey to the cornbread. And it was good. Oh, yeah. But uh, overall, with the baking, um, like I said, I learned from my grandmother. And I also learned how to bake... Um, for myself as well um, basically by experimenting with different things and even learning some things on my own and that's it all right next question comes from spritz 26 spritzel 26 is s-p-r-i-t-z-l-e-2-6 all right these youtube names <laughs> Okay, the question is, what started your passion for cooking and adding the Made by New Orleans Native into your videos? Um, my, what started my passion for cooking? Let's see. Hmm. What started it? I'm going to be honest with you. Like I said, I always tried to cook for myself. It just was something natural for me. Um, I'm not sure what started my passion for cooking. I just started cooking you know I didn't know what I was doing but I just started cooking and um, I remember as a kid I used to always watch the little uh, the little cooking shows Julia Child, Justin Wilson, Mariana Spazzino, the Italian lady and uh, she did Italian cooking of course and uh, me and my sister would watch them and uh, it was real nice I, re I really enjoyed it but it, I mean, it made me more hungry than cooking. It, it made me hungry. It didn't make me want to cook. It made me hungry, of course. But um, as far as cooking goes, only thing I can really say is that um, I just, you know, um, I always want to cook for myself, you know, and, and that's, really the, that, that's really all there is to it. <laughs> You know, but as I got older, like I said, I started learning how to, how to cook, you know, by watching my grandmother, my aunt and my uncle and several other people cook, you know, and uh, I basically became my own inspiration when it comes to cooking. You know, I never had any type of inspiration or anything. I didn't look up to anyone or anything. But if I did have to pick one, it would probably be my grandmother and my aunt and my uncle, cause, uh, especially my grandmother, because I'm, I'm like my a footprint of my grandmother's cooking, but the only difference is I cook my food from scratch, you know, mostly. Yeah. And uh, I think that's it. I think that's it for the question. Let me make sure. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. What started my Made in New Orleans native uh, thing in my videos? Um... I'm not really sure when I think about because when, when I saw the question I thought about it for a second I'm like wait hold up I think I, I think I may have gotten it off the news or something like that uh, um, 
Yeah. New Orleanians. Yeah. Uh, I think I might have gotten it off the news. I, I believe so. I'm not really sure, but um, not really certain. Not really certain. But I, it was just something that just uh, probably came in natural and it just caught on. I was like, made by New Orleans Native. You know, thanks for watching, you know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's it. Okay, next question comes from Andros. A-N-D-R-O-S. See, I can pronounce that name. <laughs> um, no, no offense to anyone else, but you know, it's a, it's a short name. Andros. I'm ho I hope I'm right while I'm sitting up here talking. Um, the question is, Charlie, are you single? And what type of work uh, you do outside of your home? Um, am I single? Yes. I am single. Uh, what type of work do I do outside of my home? Um, can't necessarily say what work I do, but what I can tell you is that I deal with people. I think I answered that question already, but um, I deal with people, a like customer service type thing. And uh, yeah, that's it. All right, next question comes from Cool C. Mitch. So that's cool and then the letter C right after and then Mitch. Okay. Her question is, do I make black eyed peas for the new year? <laughs> LOL, of course. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a nice question. <laughs> but um, to be honest with you, um, I haven't made black eyed peas for a long time. It's been a long time since I cooked black eyed peas. Um, I think the last time I cooked black eyed peas was either in December 2003 and that was like 15 years ago. And uh, that was my last time I could remember I was in the apartment and I was cooking black eyed peas. And I remember I added the butter and stuff. Um, yeah, uh, I think that was the last time I cooked them because right after that you know, I don't really remember um, cooking black eyed peas. No, it's been a very long time since I cooked black eyed peas. Because all other times I would have remembered. Most of the time for the new year, now I cook cabbage with cornbread. Uh, just recently this year, I was thinking about cooking some black eyed peas and uh, doing a video on them. But I was like, mm, I don't really want to. I don't cook them at all <laughs> period like talking about it but if some if, if i was to um somebody was to give me some black eyed peas and be like cook some black eyed peas right now yes absolutely would would cook it if, if i had to you know but mm, i might think about cooking them soon since i haven't cooked them haven't cooked black eyed peas in such a long time but they are very good though very good probably because when i was younger I like black eyed peas, but I didn't necessarily care about them. But now that I'm older, it might my opinion might I might make some black eyed peas, and my opinion might change about them. But overall, you know, they're okay. They're not better than red beans. <laughs> okay, next question comes from Just Being Me underscore DC. <laughs> Y'all with these YouTube names? That's that's a name right there. But okay. Uh, anyways, uh, the question is, do you watch any other cooking videos? If not, you should you should watch Mark Wings. <laughs> okay, uh, even though I don't know who Mark Wings is, but okay, I guess I'll look him up. But uh, do I watch any other cooking videos? No, I, I, I don't. Um, I have to admit that. Um, before I started the cooking channel, um, I used to watch cooking videos. I used to watch the cooking and the baking and stuff like that from other people's channels. But since I have my own thing going with my own YouTube channel and trying to keep up with you all, um, I basically stopped watching them. I used to, but not, not, not anymore. Um, now, some, now somebody asked me, okay, y'all, I need you to check out my, my channel. Um, I do. Now, there was one person the other day had asked me to check out her channel. She's, I think, I don't know where she's from, but I know she's not um, from the United States. And I went and checked out her channel. I'm like, wow, that was nice. I mean, I liked everything about her channel. She had the, you know, as far as her, as far as her ingredients, she had all her ingredients were fresh and they were native to her country. And, and I really, really liked that. 
about cooking channels. They, they, um, I like, really like the people that have food that is native to their area. And that's like with me, with, with my channel, I want my channel to be more New Orleans oriented, you know, versus, you know, another cooking channel where they're having everything under the sun. You know, I just prefer to have, you know, my cooking channel where I represent my city and, and my people and where I come from, you know. But uh, overall, they have some nice cooking channels out there. But no, I, I, I don't really uh, watch cooking videos. But I have to admit that I do watch other videos that's not pertaining to cooking or baking. Yeah. Uh, I do watch other videos. Yeah. But as far as cooking videos from other channels, no. Okay, next question comes from Tihana Take Nicholas. Oh my goodness, these YouTube names are getting... Uh, getting very unpronounceable after, after a while. Um, I'm not certain how it's T-E-H-O-N-A, T-E-H-O-N-T-A-K-E. So that's Tihana Take, Tihana Take, Tihana, I'm sorry for pronouncing your name. Tihana Take Nicholas, hope I got it right. <laughs> okay, the question is, what is the best way to make apple crumble? I actually have a recipe for that. Um, just look up um, apple crumb and type in Charlie Andrews and the recipe will come up. But uh, it's very, very simple and very, very easy to do. Um, it's basically like uh, making a pie crust sorta and you add the oatmeal, um, you add the flour, the butter, the oatmeal, um, any type of um, nuts that you might wanna add like almonds or pecans or walnuts, whatever you have. Um, and then once you make your apple filling, just place it on top, bake it in the oven for, for a few minutes and bam, apple crumble. <laughs> now, the second question is, what is your favorite dish to cook? Hmm, I have so many favorite dish, I have so many dishes that I can cook. Not a whole lot, I can't cook everything. But, um, what is my favorite dish to cook? Let's see. If I had to pick one. It would have to be red beans and rice. And the reason why I say that is because that was one of the first things I learned how to cook. Red beans and rice. Oh yeah. Um, I enjoy cooking red beans. It's, 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 it's just good. Just good. Delicious and, and, it's, and everybody from New Orleans, we, we love us some red beans. Now they, got, they do have a small amount of people that don't like them, um, I don't see why, but the beans are very good, especially red beans, absolutely delicious, man. But uh, I'm gonna tell you how I started cooking red beans. Like, I remember I was uh, cooking for my sisters at the time, and uh, my sister had a, a pot of water with the red beans inside. And she called me and she said, uh, she was like, say boy, what you doing? And I said, nothing, she was like, um, you gonna cook them beans for us? I'm like, man, I don't know how to cook no beans. She was like, you gonna learn the day. <laughs> so I was like, uh, okay. So actually that day when I cooked the beans, I cooked them real good. Didn't know what I was doing, but I, but I cooked them. Yeah. And I guess that's what started the, the red beans revolution. Cause I, 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 after that, I was really cooking red beans. So. Okay. This is the last question. Comes from YouTube name. Male, M A L E. Hmm. These YouTube names are getting uh, different every time I uh, read a question. <laughs> yeah. Um. But that's not too bad. I know one person. Uh, their YouTube username was called LeBron's Hairline. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyways, on to the question. Do you work in a restaurant? I've been asked this many times before. No, I do not work in a restaurant. Have I ever worked in a restaurant before? Yes, I have. Okay. And uh, that is it for all of the questions. I uh, hope you all enjoyed the video. I hope I was able to answer all of your questions. And uh, don't forget, I have my very first Q&A video if you want to check that out. Um, the link to that video will be in the description box. And also, if you want to ask a question for a future Q&A video, 
you're going to leave that question in the description box and I'll include that in the next video. Um, and that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Until next time, take care and I hope you all have a blessed day. Bye-bye.